Hey guys, Peter here to do an EP review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Spirit of Drift, Forge Your Future, out August 27th on Century Media Records. It has three tracks, 20 minutes in length, and this is the band's third EP. They are an American Doom metal band. Now, these three tracks offer a lot of similarities, but they also offer a lot of differences. There's a sense of growth, there's a sense of morphing, but there's always something that travels from one song to the other. So there's not a clear break from track to track. This is a very continuous release. You press play and you lose yourself in it. Next thing you know, the three songs are over, your experience is finished and you wanna go back to where it all started. I think it's easier to achieve this ability to create something that stays consistent, that stays cohesive, that stays compact, and at the same time add diversity to it across an EP versus a full length record. It becomes a lot more uh, of a job, of a hardest job to keep a, a whole full album pulling you in different directions but still keeping you on the same path. And that's exactly what's gonna happen across these three different songs. Once you get into the soundscape, you're still gonna have some Doom influences to the overall experience, but this is definitely a more classic heavy metal, even hard rock style record. Huge Black Sabbath influence. I don't think you can walk away from listening to these three songs without realizing how much of a drive that influence pushes the songs, the creation, the design, and definitely the atmosphere that they created. It really feels like a release that's been in the vault for many years and it's finally seen the, uh, the, the light of day. It has a throwback feel, it has a throwback sound, it has a throwback execution and structure, and it matches really well uh, in terms of what Spirit of Drift is all about. This is nothing really new to them, but I feel like with this release, they've gone a little bit more down a linear path, and, and they're not really looking in terms of trying to figure out which direction they need to take. They understood exactly where they wanted to start, how they wanted to finish, and how things would morph and change along the way. Within that soundscape, the guitars and drums play two different roles, but two very consistent roles across all three songs. If you look at the drums, with the exception of the last track, Invisible Enemy, where they have a little bit more heaviness at times, they're very subdued, they have a very controlled approach, they create the bass line of the record of the songs and allow the guitars then to come on top and become the dictators of the drive of the force of the overall experience. This is definitely a guitar-driven release every single song, you just gravitate to how the guitars sound, how they are executed, how they come across, and what do they give to the songs themselves. Incredible guitar playing, incredible tone. I love how the guitars feel and, and come across in terms of creating the right atmosphere for the right sound. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter how much influences you have of the past and how much of that throwback presence is there. The guitars sound, the tone, and then the execution in terms of the mixing and recording, is really what brings it all to life. On top of this, you have an incredible vocalist, Nate Garrett. He just really understands what he can do with his voice, not just sing the lyrics, not just coming along for the ride, but to give the songs uh, enough moments of ups and downs, enough ebbs and flows, bringing in brightness, taking that away, bringing in a little bit of groove, a little bit more melody, pushing it to the other direction. So I felt that the inflections that he gave to the songs with his vocal performance were really important, specifically on tracks that felt a little bit more linear, that felt like they were really not going anywhere but straight. His voice was really the catalyst to create a little bit of division, a little bit of a break here and there, and make the songs a lot more interesting, a lot more impactful. Now let's get into these three songs, starting off with Forge Your Future, the opening track. Great guitar opening, I love the sound, and then it moves more into a somber riff, so I like that transition as well, because it works really smooth, and you almost don't feel going from one into the other. It brings a little bit of an old school flavor to the overall sound, still a guitar driven track, as they all are, and the vocals add also a little bit of a sense of movement in terms of how they are recorded within the mix. This is something that's true through all three tracks, but I felt that on this song you could really feel the vocals don't have a static approach. They feel like they're moving within the mix in terms of where they are in comparison to the guitars and drums. I really like that style because it matches the overall old school feel that these songs have. So it matches it perfectly and enhances that experience. This song has an amazing solo. It brings a little bit of light. It brings a little bit of life to this song and it works really well in the overall construction and consistency that this track has to offer. Next you have Wake Up, a more hard rock driven song. It has a little bit more of a classic feel overall. The chorus is super catchy both musically and vocally. The verses feel a little bit more like melodic rock and roll, steady, moving at a methodic pace. 
And then after the second chorus, the song picks up a little bit of steam. It becomes a little bit more driven. It's still rock and roll. It's still old school rock, but with a little bit more of an edge. And that becomes a little bit of the staple of how this whole track comes together. Last but not least, you have Invisible Enemy, perhaps the more dynamic track of all three, a song that, that still depends on the guitars to drive the experience, to create the necessary ebbs and flows. It still has a lot of movement, it still has a lot of uh, tempo. It, it's not a fast moving song, but it has a nice tempo to it. It has a nice existence to it, if you will. And I like the way it moves. Once it gets to the midway point, the song changes. It becomes a completely different track. It, it becomes a song that has two sides of the same coin. That's how this track feels. That's how it's put together. And that's definitely how it comes across. The mixing in the vocals in terms of how the guitar sounds becomes the key factor in order for this song to feel really dynamic, to feel like it's really moving, to feel like it's really morphing, perhaps a little bit more eclectic, but at the same time still very consistent, still very cohesive. So a very interesting song that feels like it's contracting, uh, expanding, contracting, expanding. I, I like that style, I like that movement. Like I said, the most dynamic track of all three songs on this release by Spirit Adrift. Now, let me know your thoughts on the band, on the EP. Uh, use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.